What's up, family? Welcome back to the channel. So we have this artist right here that openly admits on this interview that his manager at the time was demon-possessed and continually pressured him into signing the record deal. So without further ado, let's get straight into this and let's hear his story. Warner in America, and it was like, it was surreal. Like, in Bangle Studio, man's phone just popping off, popping off, popping off. Like, yo, it was crazy. So you're going through all of this, that, that's a mixture of emotions. Yeah. Like, up, down, up, down. Yeah. And then there's a moment where you get your first check. Yeah. What was that first check and how did that come about? Long story short, um, we've, we've, met, we've linked up with another producer called ADP and he's like, oh, can we just make some songs? You want to make a mixtape? We're like, yeah, whatever. Then me and Kreps had a conversation and it's like, all right, we're just going to make whatever we want to make because the labels is telling us to make this, that and a third. Then other people's like, nah, man, I don't feel like they've got it in them. They're like presenters. Long story short, um, we've we've met, we've linked up with another producer. Then labels is telling us to make this, that, and a third. Then other people's like, nah, man, I don't feel like they've got it in them. They're, they're like presenters, like they're they're funny, like and in deck, like they're not music guys, like they should just go into presenting type of thing. So it's like, all right, cool, fuck what everyone else is on. They're saying Ant and Deck. Yeah, they're calling them Ant and Deck. So it's like, oh, they're like, put a guitarist in the group and we'll sign you, like an N Dubs type thing. So we're like, all right, fuck all that. Let's just make something that we like, and then like, fuck it, let's make the music we make. So we ended up making Young Kings. Put out Young Kings, found funding ourselves and et cetera. Ended up um, putting that out, that got a Guinness World Record, highest chart and independent album ever. And that's when the check come. So then now the labels want to have a conversation and it's like, how are these guys in the charts and we don't know who they are? What? We need them. So we're having meetings, et cetera. Boom, um, one the mobile. Like, it was like everything, the ball started rolling for us. It was like, yeah, boom, we're in. And one of the songs is connected somehow virally again. And the Americans are talking about Don't Waste My Time and they want to link, man. When you're negotiating that album deal, it's the same as like any business deal, right? Mm. You're going in there and it's a bit harder because you're the product. Mm. And it's hard to know what your value is because even though you know you're doing all these numbers, how yeah. do you quantify the, like, the, the, yeah. the number? So how was that for you lot, like going in and sitting with the record label and saying, we want this? I'll, I'll be honest with you, that was like the hardest part of our career and it's very, had a domino effect. Like, I feel like it's taught us a lot. Like, remember the game was in such a mad turmoil, like so many people been dropped at that time. Mm -hmm. And the radio, like back then the radio ran the music. So it's like, whatever the radio is saying, they're going to play and champion, that's what's happening. So at the time the radio was like, yeah, we're done with the gram thing. They're not, they're not connecting. We're going to go back to bands. So when we're getting signed now, the labels are basing what we're going to do in the future off of what people have done in the past. So it's like, yeah, the grime thing was here for five minutes, so we think they deserve this. And then when we're sitting down with the, the lawyer, the lawyer's like, sign it, sign it. Don't matter what it is, just sign it, because they're not signing no one. Just take the check, take the money, just sign it. Like, he, it was a bit pressure-ish, and I'm like, why is he like pressuring me like that? Like I didn't really like that. And I'll be honest, I've never told this story before. And I feel like I like, I'm just gonna say it because I feel like you should know. Anyway, when we signed it, before we signed it though, I was a bit off on it. And because the pressure was a bit much, it was like sign it, sign it. And I remember speaking to my old manager, right? And no, if I'm lying, I'm flying. He's, po he's, he's phoned me and we're in the studio and I put him on loudspeaker old manager, and he's like, yeah, like, what are you lot thinking about the deal? We're like, yeah, we want to sign it, but we want to wait and see what happens. And like, on God, Shamja, his voice changed in like a, like a demon's voice. Sign the deal, sign it now, sign it, sign it. I got so shook, I threw my phone on the floor. If I'm lying, I'm flying. Wallahi. And me and Krep just staring at the phone on the floor, like, what the fuck? His voice just changed into like a gremlin. And all he kept saying is, sign the deal, sign the deal, sign the deal. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I dropped the phone and stepped back like this, and we're just staring at the phone for about three minutes. Like, I'm like, did you hear that, bro? He's like, yeah, bro, like, what the fuck's that? Like, that's mad. So I picked up the phone and I phoned back my manager, like, yo, bro, like, what happened to your voice, bro? He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, bro, your voice changed, bro. He's like, what are you talking about? So from then, I was a bit, yeah, yeah this is a bit funny. Ended up signing the deal anyway, but I was like five <laughs> hours late. They still signed me. I was yeah. a bit skeptical. Really. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, after you heard a whole demon out of his band, you're trying to sign the deal, sign the deal. He's like, I still ended up signing the deal anyway. I was not expecting that one, bro. 
But, bro, these, these contracts are crazy. Like, there's some contracts that lock artists in for life. And in the contracts, it's like, all right, like once you sign, it's like, all right, bet we basically own you. We tell you what to dress, we tell you what to say, we tell you what music to make, and you no longer really have freedom. <laughs> That's tough. And Bay Young Boy literally made a story post. He was like, yo, he's like, he said, don't sign to Atlantic if you don't want to be a slave. What happened to your voice, bro? Is that what are you talking about? Is that, bro, your voice changed, bro. Is that what are you talking about? So from then, I was a bit. Yeah, yeah, this is a bit funny. Ended up signing the deal anyway, but I was like five hours late. They still signed it. I was a bit skeptical. When you watch the video back, my face is a bit like, yeah, it's a bit weird. I don't know if I'm. Oh, I was overthinking yeah, it. Yeah, but because... you probably would have been overthinking it because when a contract comes, it's like that's a very scary. All we mm. we've heard so many horror stories. Number uh, one. Let me show you guys the face he was talking about. He was he was saying that his face was like off. So this is like when he actually signed the contract. I had watched this part of the video. I'll show you guys. So this is him signing the contract. This is his friend that also signed the contract. And then, so you can see like he, he doesn't really look excited. Like he almost looks like he's still thinking about it. So like he like he's looking away. Like he's like, yo, what did I just get myself into? Cause everyone else over there is smiling. He looks like he's still thinking. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. Money. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my... yeah, bro, that's a rough one. I mean, especially, bro, if, you, if you're saying you heard a demon speaking through the manager, another one bites the dust, man. Let's get back into this interview. When a contract comes, it's like, that's a very scary... All we, mm. We've heard so many horror stories, number one. Mm. This is your life because it is you. Mm. It's not like it's just like, oh, I'm going to sign over, I don't know, a bottle or whatever it is. This is, this is me. I'm signing the rights to me, basically. Mm and all I've worked for and my way out. Mm. So it means a lot to you, you know? So you're sitting there and you're reading through this. You now don't really feel your manager. Bro, it's been it a, was a really spooky it moment. It was spooky, bro. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was spooky, It's one of the bro. spookiest things I've ever seen and heard and was involved in. Do you get it? And the lawyer wasn't, the lawyer was very like, he just wanted man to sign it. Because obviously, you know the lawyers, they get their commission and whatnot, so. So you and Crept are super worksy. Yeah, yeah. Like, Whilst you were signed, I think most people think the same thing they think when they when they start a business um, or they sign a contract at a label, that you sign and then that's it, everything's handed to you. Mm. But you lot didn't operate like that. You lot were out there contacting people, boom, I want to work with this person, I want to work with that person. I remember, do you remember calling me when I was with, I was with T-Pain? You was like, I want to work with T-Pain. <laughs> and you lot kept, like, I, I don't even know how fast you got there. You got there so quickly. Um, and it's like, I just don't think people are like that. They're just like, oh, my ego, I'm not doing this. Mm. Like, what kept you lot in the game even when you were succeeding? You know what it is? I feel like there's just so much ground to cover and so much to do and so much little time to do it. So with us, I feel like we're just very hands-on. We want it done now. Like, if it can happen now, why not? Yeah, so to be honest, like, I don't know much about this guy. I don't know much about his music career. It seems like he's more of, like, a, a UK artist. He could be underground or he could be mainstream in the UK. We don't know. I don't know. You may know. But at the end of the day, bro, this is another reason why, another story as to how the music industry, you know, it gets interesting when it comes to these demons and how they work through people to get people to sign certain contracts that they're unaware of what it actually entails, locking people in for life, some of them not getting paid for the work that they're actually even doing. It gets rough, so I don't really know. I don't know how he's doing. You know what I'm saying? This is the first time he let the public know what what actually happened, but we never know how, like what he's getting paid or how he even how he's even doing like in real life. You feel what I'm saying? But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you do smash like button, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. The same way you gonna catch me in the next one. Peace.